on Channel 3 and the WFSP First Alert weather app. Right now at 6, the big three on three. Number one, a first alert for snow and an icy mix. The problems we're seeing on the roads and the concern as the temperatures drop. Number two, day three of the Michelle Traconis trial. Today, the Dulos family nanny took the stand. What she told the court about when she first met Michelle Traconis. Number three, a deadly crash involving minors and a stolen car. The new details we're learning about the teen who was killed over the weekend. Now on Channel 3 and streaming on WFSP Plus, this is Eyewitness News at 6. First up right now at 6, we start with a live look outside from our iCams for you in Hartford, Middletown, New London, and Torrington right now. We have seen snow and ice really all across our state today. And now the attention shifting to those falling temperatures and concerns about a refreeze. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Erin Connolly. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Sinney. Our team coverage tonight begins with Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. He's joining us right now with the very latest. Mark. Yes, we're still tracking some lingering precip, but it's in the process of winding down. We saw snow go over to an icy mix, even rain for parts of southeastern Connecticut. It's back over to snow before ending. We're zoomed into the uh, greater Hartford area here on First Alert Live Radar. A little uh, swath of snow moving into Windsor, Bloomfield, West Hartford, Weathersfield out of Farmington, into New Britain, Rocky Hill, and Berlin at the current time. On the statewide perspective, that's basically it. Some flurries as well uh, transitioning over to flurries, I should say throughout southeast Connecticut where we had a prolonged period of a mix and, and even a chilly rain. So while our winter weather advisory that's in effect statewide wraps up in an hour from now, the concern goes beyond seven given that uh, temperatures will be dropping. We've got uh, any untreated surfaces that are wet will certainly become icy as the night wears on. Temperatures dropping below freezing through the 20s as the night progresses eventually, especially inland into the teens by early tomorrow morning. So again, all the precip winding down we're on the back edge of this storm system. Cloud cover soon clearing out. Uh, by, say, 10, 11 o'clock tonight, our sky goes mainly clear. Tomorrow, we'll wake up to plenty of sunshine. We'll also wake up to wind chill values down into the single digits. So your first alert to uh, needing to dress accordingly for tomorrow morning's weather. Certainly want to layer up. By the afternoon, temperatures top out only in the mid and upper 20s with a mostly sunny sky. The wind tomorrow, though, while it's not going to be terribly strong, it will make those 20s through the afternoon feel more likely like the teens. We'll have much more on even colder weather, even a dangerous combination of cold and wind for the upcoming weekend. And before that, the possibility is there for a little snow on Friday. That's all ahead in the first alert 7 In the meantime, we'll continue our team coverage right now with Lauren Richardson, who has the latest from the uh, Pinpoint Traffic Center on how this weather is affecting roadways across our state. Yeah, Mark, and we want to give you the first alert. It is still messy out there. I know Mark mentioned that the precip is winding down, but we still have uh, an accident over here. Actually, this just popped up. This is in Groton. We're hearing this is involving three vehicles, I-95 southbound between exits 86 and 84. So let's actually take a look outside at that accident. Yeah, you can see right now, seems to be blocking several lanes. That traffic just really trying to squeeze through at this point. So this is a repetitive pattern we've been seeing through this evening. A lot of those accidents out there before we actually did see an accident too in the Plainville area that has cleared. We actually had three accidents in the Plainville area. Now you just see some low visibility uh, still some wet, slick surfaces, maybe some icy conditions out there, too. Our first alert, uh, you can see overall for the state, we're still seeing a lot of red, yellow on your screen, which means a lot of slow-going traffic out there, which is good. We want to be slow. This actual accident actually has cleared in the New Haven area uh, right near Route 34, and you can actually see throughout our state right now just still slick roads at the moment. Uh, those drive times still uh, not looking great to I-91 I-84, I-95. So we'll continue to keep you posted, of course, on any big accidents that we hear about. Back to you, Mark and Aaron. All right, Lauren, thank you very much. Our team coverage right now heading to southeast Connecticut. That's where the mixing started earlier in the day, creating a wet, slushy snow. And that's why the big worry tonight is a refreeze. Channel 3 New London Bureau Chief Luke Hydash is live in Colchester tonight with a look at the conditions there. Luke. Aaron, Mark, the snow has moved out all day long. We started with that snow, then we went to kind of a mixed bag, moved over to pure rain eventually, and all of that has left. Whether you plow it, blow it, or clear it the old-fashioned way, people living in Colchester woke up and had to clean up. Heavy wet with a thin crust on top. 
Robert Gustafson's truck is the snow chief, fitting as he clears both his and his daughter's driveways. Get rid of the berm by the end of the street. Yeah. My wife's car is low. While Gustafson plows his driveway, town plow drivers are hard at work clearing the snow on the roads and dropping material, getting ready for a drop in temperatures. Basically, we just got to be prepared for the black ice situations and, you know, the water refreezing on the ground. So Worried about the refreeze later? Absolutely. I think the road crews have done a great job, but you, you just can't be too careful. Slick Road shut down one lane of Route 2 East by exit 18 in town. This tractor trailer jackknifed. No one was hurt, but crews did have to clean up some spilled diesel. Colchester saw a couple inches of snow, enough to close schools, but kids found other ways to keep busy. We just came, did our job, hurried up, got it done, so we can go do other stuff today. Like those boys shoveling public works has other things to do today. They are still out tonight, and they will be until around 10, 11 o'clock or so, making sure they have everything they can do to make sure those roads don't refreeze. In Colchester, Luke Hydash, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. All right, Luke, thank you very much. Now, in the northwest corner, the town of Norfolk is calculating the cost of cleanup there. Local leaders say one pass-through of highway department trucks on the road costs $5,000. Yeah, it's a lot. And so far, they have benefited from good timing with bouts of warm weather melting away the snow after recent storms. They say a lot of the highway budget was used last year on road repairs from the July flood washouts. The town got some help from the state, but leaders still expect to spend several hundred thousand dollars more to finish up those repairs. Slick roads have been causing problems for drivers all day long. Look at this right here. A car flipped over after a crash on Route 15 North in Meriden. This was just before 10 o'clock this morning, right near exit 67. You can see it there just near the highway sign. Police tell us at least one person was hurt, but they have not said how badly. And a good reminder right now, you can download the WFSB First Alert weather app to get the latest updates on the forecast sent straight to your phone. Some other news for you right now at 6, day 3 of the Michelle Traconis trial, a packed day with the focus not only on physical evidence, but also testimony from someone who knew Jennifer Farber Dulos and her estranged husband, Fotis. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane is covering the case for us and continues our coverage from Stanford Superior Court. It was a busy day for jurors here, not only hearing more about those blood-like stains and fingerprints in the New Canaan home, but late this afternoon also hearing from the Dulos children's nanny. It was these uh, blood-like stains here. Now retired state police detective Matthew Riley back on the stand documenting blood-like stains found on a Range Rover inside the New Canaan garage to spots all over the floor and even some blood-like stains inside the house. Prosecutors allege Michelle Traconis conspired with and helped her then-boyfriend, Fotis Dulos, cover up the disappearance and death of his wife, Jennifer Farber Dulos. Riley was the evidence collection officer on the state police major crimes van, explaining to jurors how he field-tested for blood, including spraying the chemical luminol, which picks up difficult-to-see stains, like those in the back of Farber Dulos's abandoned Chevy Suburban. We utilize it as a search tool. Uh, we have to do uh, further presumptive tests and then, of course, uh, any samples that we collect, we have to send to a laboratory for confirmatory tests. But defense attorney John Schoenhorn objected to the line of questioning, arguing that chemical can actually pick up multiple substances in addition to blood, and that the testimony could be misleading or confusing. Luminol is not a detection for blood. It's a detection for iron. This is the back of a vehicle. It detects steel, iron. I understand it also... Uh, can detect copper. Following Riley, prosecutors put Lauren Almeida on the stand, the Dulos children's nanny, who started working for the family, taking care of their five kids starting in 2012, testifying she first met Michelle Traconis during a Dulos family vacation to Miami, and that Jennifer thought her husband was cheating on her. At that time, I had a good relationship with Otis, and I believed him to be an honest guy, and I couldn't imagine him having an affair where there's five little kids involved. And Almeida will be back on the stand tomorrow morning to resume her testimony. Reporting at Stanford Superior Court, Matt McFarland, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Still ahead right here at 6, the snow kept some planes out of the sky, what passengers faced at Bradley International Airport. And let's take a live look outside through our iCam in Mystic. You are watching Eyewitness News at 6 on a snowy and icy and rainy Tuesday. We'll be back right after this. Waited patiently. Now, the suspense is almost over. 
Take the shot! Take the shot. All we can do is wait. This is the part where you start talking. I always believed I was on the side of good. We're moving now! All new seasons of the FBI's part of CBS Premier Week after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus. I was a rider before I became an attorney. I know the dangers bikers face every day. So if you're hurt in a motorcycle accident, don't fight the insurance company with just any lawyer. You need a lawyer who rides. You need to get Carter. As the cold weather rolls in, it's a good idea to get your shots for COVID-19, the flu, and RSV. These tools will help keep you from becoming severely ill or spreading viruses to others. Please visit vaccines.gov. In Wren Kitchen's famous winter sale, get up to 60% off fully built kitchen cabinets with 0% APR for 84 months. Plus, get 10% off selected quartz countertops. Visit your nearest showroom and join the great renovation. Connecticut's largest, most experienced team of meteorologists. Channel 3 First Alert Weather. We are on top of breaking news out of Weathersfield tonight. That's where police have identified the teen killed in a horrific crash involving a stolen car over the weekend. Channel 3's Hector Molina is on the first alert desk with what he's learning. Hector? Well, police say the boy who died was just 14 years old. His name is Novell Nesmith, and we're learning he went to school in Hartford. Novell was one of three minors inside of this car Sunday afternoon. Police say the person behind the wheel was driving wildly down Church Street when they hit another car, veered off the road, hit a tree, and then a home. The, uh, the two other young people were taken to the hospital. Police say the car was stolen out of Hartford. On the first alert desk, I'm Hector Molina, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Hector, thank you. In East Windsor, some businesses were forced to evacuate after two trucks crashed earlier today. This happened on South Main Street. One of those trucks was carrying propane. We are still working to learn what caused the crash and if anyone was injured. In Manchester, a crash here involving a car and tractor trailer closed two lanes of I-84 West earlier today. In fact, we have some video right here. This was just after 1 o'clock near the Tallinn Turnpike. Crews were loading the the car onto a tow truck. There's no word on any injuries, but all those lanes are open again. Still ahead tonight, airline travelers are running into problems as well. How Bradley International Airport is handling the snowy weather. And we're tracking, of course, a downturn in temperature, so a concern for refreezing tonight. Uh, then, as well, the arrival of the coldest air of the season and perhaps a little bit more snow before we get to the weekend. A lot to cover ahead in the first alert forecast when Eyewitness News at 6 continues. Tonight on Channel 3 begins with a new episode of NCIS Sydney, followed by FBI and FBI International. Then it's Eyewitness News at 11. Sponsored by Connecticut Mattress. Sleep better, feel better with Connecticut Mattress. It's a really cool winter day. I want to go outside and play. Yeah! Go outside and play in a brand new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive because there's always more to explore. It's a really cool winter day. I want to go outside and play. Buy starting at $25,195 or lease for just $2.99 per month. Subaru, Subaru. The seven-day forecast is sponsored by NJM. No jingles or mascots, just great insurance. The countdown till summer is on. The Hartford Boat Show at Mohegan Sun. Boats for every budget and lifestyle. Thousands of accessories. Reduced sales tax on boats, trailers, and motors. January 18th through 21st, Earth Expo Center. Mohegan Sun. HartfordBoatShow.com. Hey, everybody. It's me, Tracy Turnblad from Hairspray. Broadway's Tony Award winning best musical is back. Don't miss Hairspray. January 16th through the 18th. For tickets, go to palacetheaterct.org. 
It's the 20th annual Sun Wine and Fruit Fest at Mohegan Sun. And we're uncorking the legacy with 20 events over four days. And over a thousand wines, beers, and spirits. Sip exclusive samples at the Grand Tasting and Vintage Crew. Dive into fine dining with celebrity chefs. Break out the good stuff with Brian and Aaron. Make mimosas with Martha and more. January 25th through the 28th. The 20th annual Sun Wine and Food Fest at Mohegan Sun. Get your tickets now. I'm here at Dean Stove and Spa Shop in Southington, and you're going to come down and you're going to see the finest stoves and fireplaces in the world. These are the brands that the custom builders put in their own homes. Find out more at one of our two locations. Connecticut's most trusted team at 5, 6, and 11. Mark Zinni, Aaron Connolly, and First Alert Chief Meteorologist Mark Dixon. Only on Eyewitness News. Welcome back tonight to Eyewitness News here at 6. Our team coverage on the weather continues right now. The snow had an impact on flights and schools today. Channel 3 Hartford Bureau Chief Aya Galal gives us a look at how Hartford County fared in today's snowy conditions. I was supposed to go to D.C., yeah. Jeremy Pinto is trying to get to basic training with the National Guard, but his flight out of Bradley International Airport was canceled today and has been rescheduled to Wednesday. I mean, what can you do? Life gives you some challenges, but, you know, yeah. you just got to, I guess you just got to wait. His flight was among a handful of cancellations and delays due to the wintry weather locally and in other parts of the country. The airlines are the ones that ultimately decide if there's going to be a change in any of the flight schedules, whether it's a delay or a cancellation. It's not the airport. Crews spent the day clearing snow from the runway in an effort to keep the flow of flights moving. In downtown Hartford, snow was pushed out of the way on streets and sidewalks as the flakes accumulated. The snowy weather not stopping this man from biking down Main Street. The slippery conditions on roads meant school was canceled for many districts. With school not in session and snow sticking, these kids in Newington got their sleds out. It's been really good. Lily says she had a blast sledding with her sister. What's your favorite part about sledding? Hmm. We're going down the mm -hmm. hill. And making the most of another snowy day in Connecticut. AGNN, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Yeah, just enough snow to have some fun today across Connecticut. Unfortunately, it was followed by a little icy mix, especially for communities along and southeast of 84. Uh, Plainfield, one of our highest totals of four inches. Avon, three, two and a half from Jewett City. Jeff and Staffordville, a recent uptick to 2.2 inches as you switch back to snow this afternoon. Weathersfield, Roger at an inch and a half. Uh, from Canaan, Jim Meehan reporting three and a half inches. Willimantic, 2.4. Norwich, 2.3. Killingworth at two inches. So we we're forecasting one to three inches before that transition over to that uh, mix and even rain for southeastern Connecticut. So more or less those line, uh, right in line with what we were forecasting. A first alert live radar, we've got some lingering drizzle flurries and even some light snow freezing drizzle. So certainly not a good thing tonight as temperatures at the surface still below freezing. Light snow moving through the greater Hartford area up along the 84 corridor. Uh, and once that wraps up, basically uh, the precip is over and cloud cover will be clearing out as the evening progresses. We have temperatures that are trending in the downward direction. We're sub-freezing now statewide. 28 Hartford, 31 right now in New Haven, but 22 in Salisbury. When you factor in this wind that is up right now, sustained 5 to 15 miles an hour, making it feel more like the teens in many communities. In fact, down to 7 degrees is what it feels like currently in Salisbury. So a check of our ICAM view from Waterbury. You can see uh, the roads certainly have been cleared, but still a little bit slushy out there. Those secondary, tertiary roads, parking lots, sidewalks, patios, decks, uh, certainly becoming slick on underfoot tonight if uh, they are untreated. So uh, all of that lingering moisture as temperatures continue their downward plunge will be uh, will be freezing up. So our view from Mystic uh, showing otherwise quiet conditions right now. Uh, the bulk of the priests have begun shifting away from southern New England. We're on the back side of that. The cloud cover uh, now moving the back edge of it through New York and Pennsylvania soon across Connecticut by say midnight. So on the back side of this area of low pressure that's moving away, colder air is going to be moving in our direction. Syracuse, 19. 
15 right now in Buffalo. That's the cold air that we're going to wake up to uh, tomorrow morning. So looking at the big picture, as the storm system intensifies moving away and high pressure builds in, between the two, it's not going to be horribly windy tomorrow, but enough to make that cold air feel even chillier. Tonight, temperatures bottom out in the teens inland near 20 along the shrine. That breeze will make it feel tomorrow morning more like the single digits in many communities, perhaps even sub-zero in the hills of northwest Connecticut. Tomorrow afternoon, with a mostly sunny sky, we're back up in the mid and upper 20. So sub-freezing, certainly below average for this time of year. And wind chill values tomorrow afternoon will be in the teens. So as we head through the day tomorrow, a good amount of sunshine. We've got a little disturbance that's going to head in our direction on Thursday, bringing an increase in cloudiness, maybe a couple of flurries. But what we're going to be watching as we close out the week is the evolution of this area of low pressure as it emerges off the mid-Atlantic coast. Our models keep it basically offshore brushing southern New England with some light snow by Friday evening and then it's out of here by Saturday morning. So we've got to that possibility for light snow Friday afternoon, Friday evening. Then Saturday morning clouds give way to clearing. Highs only in the 20s. And look at those overnight lows by Sunday. We're looking at temperatures down to the single digits by Sunday afternoon, only highs in the mid-20s. So uh, the big headline for the weekend will be not only the arrival of the coldest air of the season, but the wind that will make it feel even colder. By next week, we're turning back in the 30s. By Monday, Tuesday, high temperatures back to 40, if not higher. And I want to give you the first alert to a dangerous combination of cold and wind. This is Saturday morning, wind chill values near, if not below zero. And we do it all over again Sunday morning. So, again, a shot of cold and wind on tap for the upcoming weekend. But otherwise, it's dry and bright. All right. Cold for sure. Mark, thank you. By the way, today's snow really made for a fun day for a lot of kids. They didn't have school, right? Wow. Take a look at a snowman. This is from Bethany in Columbia. Yeah, that's a great one right there. And take a look at this. The doggy is loving the snow, and they are super cute. This is Ryder, Shamrock, and Poppy enjoying the day <laughs> in Higginum. Patty, you are one lucky lady. Thanks for sending those <laughs> pictures our way. So okay. cute. Yeah, adorable. Uh, we do want to see yours as well. Use the WFSB First Alert weather app. Send them our way. We'll share them on air and online. Well, rescue crews came together in Clinton today to save a horse after the animal fell into a swamp. Take a look at this right here. We're told the five-year-old horse broke through a fence and then fell into the muddy water after being startled this morning. Crews worked for two hours to free the horse. You can see just how many people were there to help in this effort. The animal was taken back to its barn for treatment. No rescuers were hurt. Great job yeah, by everyone incredible. there. Yeah. The CBS Evening News is next. And here's a look at what's coming up. Hey, Mark and Aaron. A tale of two mayors and brothers meet the siblings who govern neighboring towns using strong family ties to give back to their communities. Those headlines and more on the CBS Evening News. And then coming up on Eyewitness News at 7, a strand of hair links the Gilgo Beach murder suspect to a fourth victim from Connecticut. We will have the latest on this case tonight at 7. Dear Winter, our squad of vehicles with all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is ready. Bundle up, Toyota. Get a great deal on Highlander with the assurance that Toyota is a Kelly Blue Book most trusted brand. Toyota. Let's go places. Hey, folks, Russ here at Express Kitchen. We have stunning colors available in any style you choose. Classic French vanilla, bold and beautiful hurricane, exquisite olive, gorgeous forest, rich cappuccino, deep midnight. All prism colors, just $2.79 a month. And now 0% financing for 72 months. That's right, 0% financing for 72 months. Express Kitchen, growing, growing, growing. No one can control the weather, but at Harp Home Services, we make sure your home is warm all season long. Our expert technicians recommend getting your furnace checked now. We'll come out to inspect your system, listen to your concerns, and guide you to a custom heating solution that optimizes your system's performance and gives you the peace of mind you deserve. Whether it's time for a tune-up, a repair, or an upgrade, your comfort is our priority. Call or schedule online today to take advantage of special offers and financing options. Dear all-wheel drive, let's show the road what we've got. Yours, Toyota. Get a great deal on a new Camry with all-wheel drive. A Kelly Blue Book best resale value. Toyota. Let's go places. I'm here for you. I'm Nora O'Donnell with the CBS Evening News. Welcome to Chiro. 
where we have sushi chefs with over 10 years of experience. That's almost like having a doctoral degree in making sushi. Enjoy our traditional Japanese kitchen with hibashi chefs that will give you a show you won't forget. And food, you'll definitely come back for again. Looking to impress your date? Try our love boat packed with sushi rolls you'll love. Or have it delivered straight to your door. Ichiro on Farmington Avenue in West Hartford, Connecticut. Have you been seriously injured in a crash? With offices in Hartford, Waterbury, Torrington, Bridgeport, and our newest office in New Haven, we can help you right away. Save time, call nine. Trantolo and Trantolo. Let our family help your family. Oh, that spin class was brutal. I bet. Can I put some music up? Pick something we all like. Something we can dance to. What's your BX Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision. Oh, you should pick something stronger. Noted. That's a really tight spot. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. The Buick Envision. Built around you. All of you. Get 1.9% APR on select Buick SUV models. Plus, current eligible non-GM owners get up to $17.50 purchase allowance. Plus, no monthly payments for 90 days. Shop right. Check out Happy. Alerting you to local dangers, covering the stories impacting your community. Trust Aaron Connolly and Mark Zinni every night on Eyewitness News at 11. New right now at 6, the Connecticut Wine Trail is bringing back its winter passport program. And it's a way to encourage people to check out wineries all across our state. And anyone who gets their passport stamped at all 13 participating wineries before the end of March will be entered to win prizes. You can pick up your free passport at any of the wineries. The full list is on ctwine.com. Right now at 6 in West Hartford, the University of St. Joseph is uh, offering a new major here. Students can take classes towards an engineering science degree starting this fall. According to the school, the new program is really a response to our state's urgent need for workers in the manufacturing and technology fields. Oh, the green grass looks nice. <laughs> so nice. Sit tight. I've seen that right it's now. Be a while. No, tonight it's going to become icy, uh, where we have that uh, residual moisture from today's precip as temperatures drop well below freezing. Tomorrow morning, waking up to wind chills in the single digits. Tomorrow, though, is a bright, dry day. Clouds increase Thursday. There's a chance for a couple of flurries. Our next uh, best chance for a little light snow comes Friday afternoon into Friday evening. Uh, that doesn't look like a hugely impactful storm as the uh, uh, coastal storm brushes southern New England. The big headline for the upcoming weekend will be the combined cold and wind. Just downright blustery for both Saturday and Sunday. Overnight lows, teens if not single digits, and that's when wind chill values could go to near zero if not below. So a dangerous combination Friday night and as well Saturday. Then we're back to near 40 by next Tuesday. All right, Mark, thank you. Of course. Be careful out there tonight, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us for the news right here at 6. Have a great night, everyone. Take care.